Hi, this is Maria Khan, um, looking at talent development programs. She's going to try and describe and evaluate a current talent development program for pass and merit. So, Maria, what, what is the development program that you're going to talk about, and can you give me a bit of a general description about it? Um, long term athlete development. Um, it's a model intended to produce a long term approach um, to maximise an individual's potential. Um, and lifelong for involvement in sport. Um, the model has stages to suit a child's physical growth and maturity, as well as psychological and social development. Um, the long-term athlete development module is split into five stages, guiding children from simple um, generic movement and sports skills through to more complex and more specific sports skills. Right, good, right. Um, so it's been, you've said, talked about different stages. Uh, is that to do with that, the peak height velocity? What's that to do with the programme? Um, peak height velocity is um, kids mature at different rates with their bodies and their development, developmental age. Um, it will determine how they should train and practice their activity or sport. Um, this is why CS4L recommends that sports clubs and any other organisation that deals with active children um, do a regular measurement and monitor the physical maturity and growth of uh, young participants. Right, yeah, good. Um, so, so, you said that phase one is fundamental, so what happens at that stage? Um, the object of this phase is for the children to just have fun and enjoy the experience of as many sports as possible. Um, the phase is appropriate for boys aged 6 to 9 and girls aged 5 to 8. It aims to develop the athlete's physical capacities and movement skills. Uh, fun games are used to develop speed, power and endurance. This stage the athletes are introduced to the simple rules and morals of sport. Um, medicine balls and Swiss balls exercises are done, which uses the child's body weight. Um, repetitions that are the duration of less than five seconds are for linear, lateral and multidimensional sport. Um, this phase is the first critical period of sport development. Fun and games should be used for speed training and the volume of training should be lower. Alright, so, so, why, so why do they make it fun then? Why, why is it called fundamentals? Um, they make it fun so that the children at the young age um, just enjoy sports and um, they get to know different sports and rules and morals of it. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so why, is it, why is it good that they, they, they do loads of different sports rather than just concentrating on like rugby or something like that? Because when, as they get older they'll get bored and um, they'll start drifting away from that sport and they won't have much interest in it. And sometimes they'll just do it for the money rather than just having fun. Yeah, all right. Right, and what's phase two then? Um, phase two is learning to train. Um, in this phase, the main points are to learn all the fundamental sports skills. Um, this phase is appropriate for, age, for boys aged 9 to 12 and girls aged 8 to 11. Um, this phase... Uh, Further develops the fundamental movement skills and learns general overall sport skills. Um, hopping, bounding exercises are added to this phase, as well as the medicine ball, Swiss ball, and own body weight exercises. Uh, this is to develop strength. Yeah, um, good. Games and relays are continued to develop endurance and development of sport of speed, which is continued with more specified activities during warm-up such as agility and quickness. Right, good. Right, then phase three. Um, training to train. Uh, the object of this phase is to develop the athlete's capacity, focusing in on aerobic conditioning and fundamental movement skills. This phase is appropriate for boys aged 12 to 16 and girls aged 11 to 15. Um, speed and sport specific skills are developed further and also develop the aerobic base. Um, this phase allows athletes to learn the correct technique of weightlifting and develop 
knowledge of how to stretch and when to stretch, how to optimize nutrition and hydration, mental preparation, competition, post uh, competition routines. Um, due to sudden growth of bones, tendons, uh, ligaments and muscles, as a child grow older, this is an importance for flexibility training. Yeah. Um, boy strength training window begins eight to six, eight, 12 to 16 months after peak height velocity. Um, there's two windows for girls to strength train. Window two is immediately after the peak height velocity. Um, window two is begins with the start of the first menstrual period. Right, good. Right, and then next stage, training to compete. Um, this phase aims to optimise fitness preparation and performance. The phase is appropriate for boys aged 16 to 18 and girls aged 15 to 17. Technical, tactical and fitness improvements are dedicated to 50% of available time for the, the athlete's health. Um, competition and competition specific training is dedicated to the other 50% of the available time. Um, the athletes need to have the well. The athletes need have individually tailored programs such as fitness recovery, psychological preparation, and technical development. Um, double and multiple periodizations is the best possible framework of preparation. All right, very good. And then training to win. Um, this aims to maximize fitness preparation and sport events. Uh, specific skills as well as per, uh, as well as performance. The phase is appropriate for boys aged eighteen plus and girls aged seventeen plus. The focus of training has shifted to the maximization of performance and the entire athlete's physical, technical, tactical, mental, personal, and lifestyle capacities. Um, they are fully established. Um. In this stage, the athlete's training is done around um, high intensity and extremely high volume work. Um, but to prevent overtraining, appropriate breaks are given. Uh, majority, well, major competition gives an athlete training to their peak. Um, training to competition ratio is 25 to 75, with a competition percentage including competition specific training activities. Right, good. So those last two stages you talked about, like tactics and improvements and things like that. Yeah. So why why do they develop the tactics at like sixteen rather than six or something like that? Um, because at that age they understand uh more of what they're being asked rather than at six because at six, um, and that quite young age they're doing yeah. uh more of different sports rather than just a specific sport, and if they're learning. The tactics of every sport that they learn, and then it would be quite hard at that age. Yeah, right? good, good. Um, right, so um, you've talked a little bit about the overall thing. Can you link it to a sport? Have you got a bit about is it rugby? Um, rugby, the phase one for fundamental, they do basic stuff like handling, running, kicking, contact, and set piece. Mm -hmm. um, for stuff like hand handling, they'll do just high, low one-handed using different shape balls for a variety of heights and speeds. Like, so can that be transferred to other sports then? Yeah, that yeah. would be like basketball yeah, and yeah, other, yeah. other uh, sports like that. And they do it so that stuff like running and leaping and stuff, it can be transferred to other sports like football and that rather than just sticking to uh, specific sport skills um, that won't be able to transfer. Good, yep. Yeah. Anything else? Um, yeah such as like phase two for rugby, they do more um, specific ones like contact with players, uh, bumping, grappling, pushing and pulling and um, they'll do stuff like basic ball control which allows them to transfer it um, like the putting down and basketball type uh, balls of uh, manipulation which can be still transferred at phase two, so they're not cutting it all out. Yeah, good. Right, so good, a good link to rugby there. So what about the strengths of the programme then? Um, a lot of the ageing, like juniors, age group and senior, have a lottery funding, so it's not all, you're not expected to pay for it all, so it's not quite as expensive as... All right, okay, yeah. Um, the 
access to sports and science medication for the this like for juniors and age group and senior. Right. Um and the English institution of sports uh, sports support services to uh, performance and potential programs so it helps them out a lot. Oh uh, yeah yeah so this so this is like the sort of like the preferred program all right. Yeah. Yeah, so you've, t you've talked about that, and you've talked about how a lot of it's transferable. Do you reckon that's the good thing about it, that it can be transferable, like the fundamentals can yeah. be transferable? a lot of the phases have um, skills where they're not cutting it out completely. Yeah. They're, they're allowing to the children to see what sport they'd rather be in, rather than just pushing them towards something. And yeah, yeah. At the end of it, they're enjoying it, rather than just doing it for the sake of it. Yeah, so good. So that's a, that's a good strength of it. Also, then, do you think a good strength of it is that they're going to be getting overall kind of fitness rather than just specialising in one kind of fitness. What about what about that? What do you think? Um like when when they're younger they will get overall fitness, but as they get older and they go towards more than, you know, just one one sport, um, that fitness will be for that sport rather than just the Yeah, but they'll they'll still have learned like the coordination and yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. For um so they will have like a lot of skills. Yeah. Um, shown to them and like just the rules basic rules and stuff for the for different sports if they do want to go into it yeah so do do a lot of sports you this development program um yeah a lot of sports do um but sports like diving and stuff do find it difficult to do it as there's, there's not a lot of um diving instructors and coaches and because diving's like something that you have, you have to be good at um, they do miss a lot of the technical and tactical stuff out just so that they win competitions and stuff in it. Yeah, because they can't really do catching and ball sports no, and stuff like that and diving at an eight year old. Yeah, yeah. So they do miss a lot of stuff. Right, good. Do you have all the negatives then? Um, there's lack of dry land training facilities. Oh, for, for diving? Yeah. So, right, what, about, what about for the whole programme oh, rather right. than just diving? Um, there's limited access for sports facilities. There's not a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people doing the development programme, so there's only a, s a small number of uh, sports facilities going for them to use for right. a period of time. What, what about, as a, as a coach, would you know all these different phases? How about well, that? you have to be educated in it. Yes, yeah, so uh, you've got to be. Educated in the principles of uh, Of it all, yeah. yeah. So do you think it's quite a lot to understand then? Yeah, if you if you bringing like children from phase one to phase five it'll be a lot you know to um understand and put into work yeah. for them and some children have a lot of um like some children are less able to do things that other children will be able to do so you have to work it around them right yeah what, what about final question what about um if you're head of man united football academy and you've got an eight-year-old who's going to be a great footballer do you think they follow these phases closely and let them do different kind of sports or do you reckon they'll change it a little bit? What do you No, they'll probably change it. If they know that he's going to be good at football, then they'll be more specific within football grounds and stuff like that. Do you think that's right then, though? Do you think it's right? No, because it's not giving... Even though they think that he's a good football player, he might not want to be a football player. He might yeah. want to be somewhere else. What about his size and things like that? Talk about that peak height velocity, do you think they're... Don't they follow it closely? Like they, uh, if he's eight, they, would they put yeah. him? In, would they put him in a gym and stuff like that and make him get muscly, or would they? They'd, would they follow it? No, I think they'd follow it for his own health, really, because yeah. then it won't be, it won't grow, uh, um, at, you know, at a healthy, at a healthy pace. If they put him in a gym and make him use heavy weights and stuff, it'll stop his height growth and stuff like that. Right.